we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Someone, the worst of sinners like me, that promise of love that we can still do well. We're standing here because of your promise. Even the worst of sinners can do well. The more we repent of our sins, the more grace we have. Lord, that grace where you help us yourself, may we receive this. May this be the mo most blessed time in our lives. And the dirty Satan, devil, that is tormenting me and my children, may they depart. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Why did God make you and I? Isaiah chapter 43, verse 21. Let's find that. He, for us to for us to give praise. So this praise is the praise from the heart. You need to have thanksgiving from the heart in order to give praise. So he's made us so that we will live to give praise. But we, every day we don't have thanksgiving and we live with worries and anxieties. So there's something very wrong. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 21. So a moment ago, how filled with grace was the choir's singing? If you worry and you're anxious, then you'll receive disasters accordingly. Those who sing praise, they live without worries and anxieties. So God has created us to live, to give praise. But as we live, we're always worrying. So there's something very wrong. So we need to fix this. The way to fix it, there is no way on this earth. So let's read Isaiah chapter 43, verse 21. The people whom I formed for myself will declare my praise. Amen. So who were we created for? For me, for the Lord. So he, he created us for himself. So, after he made us, why did he make us? Well, let's read it again. The people whom I formed for myself will declare my praise. Amen. So, when God made you and I, do you know why I made you? So that you'll live giving praise. Even if you sing classic songs, they say that's good. But to sing hymns, you know, this is such a, a great blessing. But do you, as you live, do you give praise or do you sigh? You know, as we live, it's, it's you know, we do the opposite. So if we're giving praise, that's when that family is doing well. But there's many reasons. You know, if the parents... Um, the, the sin of rebellion, they make their children so disobedient, they don't have praise. But once you commit this sin of rebellion, not only do you ruin your life, Numbers chapter 14, verse 33, so you ruin your life. Not just that, all the children become disobedient. So because of this sin of rebellion, so you know, parents, they can't give praise if their children are disobedient. The more the children are disobedient, the mother, the father, they, they, they become corrupt in the world. The children, because of the parents, they're ruined because of rebellion. But they don't know how to take responsibility. The one who commits this rebellion, Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 3 to 7, they don't even want to hear God's word. They do that, and then they don't want to hear his word. So those who commit this sin of rebellion, they're the ones that go around listening to these fake sermons. So we don't have time for that. What is it that I have to fix today? The sin of betraying Christ, the sin of rebellion. I commit this, and I make all my children disobedient. I make them problems in society. And to never feel responsible for that. These are the people who are beasts that are perishing. Who is that? It's you and I. If you don't have joy, that's the way you're going. 
so to not fall into this way. So later, if you have time. So if your children are disobedient, if you look in the world, you know, where where is there an obedient child these days? Do they give an award for an obedient child these days? If there was someone who was giving it out, they themselves aren't in their right mind because there isn't anyone obedient. They don't know the way to become obedient, so how can there be anyone obedient? So how can you become obedient, an obedient child? Someone whose ancestors haven't passed down this rebellion, they can become obedient. But because the parents all commit rebellion, this because they betray Christ, when they make their children disobedient, is there a way then to become obedient? Well, that is the way of faith. That is the way that works. So we talk a lot about faith. Matthew chapter 8, verse 13, it says, it will happen according to your faith. But what is it that actually happens according to your faith? So you don't know about faith properly. So God says, why? Why did I make you? Well, for you to give praise. So then what is it I have to do? I have to sing praise. But that it doesn't come out. Why not? You need to have thanksgiving from the heart in order to give praise. That's Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. So because you don't have this, that's why it doesn't come out. So God created us to, to give praise. After he created all of creation, did he say, oh, I feel upset about this all? Was it all, was it all thanksgiving? Let's find Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. That's why God's will is to give thanks in all things. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. So why did he make me? To give praise. For whom? For Jehovah God. So our lives, we have to always live joyfully with praise. But it doesn't work. And what's the reason for this? Because of the sin of rebellion. Because of betraying Christ. A household that betrays Christ, they pretend to live well, to be happy. They're all double-minded. It's all lies. So they get all these filthy diseases. Their children, they're all problematic. And then what? they try to marry them. The moment they get married, they're so problematic. And so the parents, after living, you know, this is, this, is, this is what they end up concluding, that many children is problematic. And that's why, I don't know if, how the world, they're united in their resolution, but each household only wants to have one child. So that's how much children have become a headache. It would be good if there were obedient children, but they don't come out. And what is the reason for this? It's because they have betrayed Christ. We say that we're doing forced out repentance, but do we do well? No. So there's something wrong. So that's what we have to fix today. If we fix this, then we get power. So Genesis chapter 1 verse 31, let's read it. God saw all that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Amen. So after he made all of creation, is there even one thing that God said was filthy? So this is where we're wrong. But if something upsets me, then we say it's wrong. Only things that suit us, we say that's good. But God says everything was good. So with your spouse... The spouse that God has appointed, you know, when you first meet them, Matthew chapter 10, verse 36, they seem to be an enemy. But when you see that person as your mirror and you repent, when I become a man, then that spouse who seems like an enemy, you become one. So this is the way God wants us to live. You know, there are people here who still their spouse relationship isn't good. It's, you know, it's a relief It's a, if it's only the spouse relationship that is bad. God created all of creation and said it was good. So if we say something's not good, then there's something crooked in us. Why don't you have praise? Because there's something that's not good. So when we look at the world, 
We have to see the world like God, where he says it's all good. That is his will, which is all things. Thanksgiving, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18. So, because we don't do this, as much as we don't do this, our business doesn't do well, our health isn't good, our families don't have happiness, we have a bad spouse relationship, and our children are problematic. You get them married and they, they become even worse. You know, if you have grandchildren, they're even worse. And so that's why the reality is that we have just these nuclear families. No matter how much man develops science and learning, we can't make our lives um, lives that give praise. You see these people who are trained in singing, you look at their families. They're a mess. Why is that? Even though they're, they're, you know, singing, they they sing so much and they sing classic songs, it's because they don't have thanksgiving. They, they don't have the heart where they see the world in a beautiful way. And so the problem is, well, the answer, let's find the answer. Titus chapter 1 verse 15. So why is it that's not beautiful in your eyes? In your life, your eyes, you know, God, Why is it God? He says, everything is good to give thanks in all things, to give praise. But why isn't it good for me? And my face is hardened and I can't give praise. It's because I don't have faith. So you say, oh no, but I have faith. Don't be deceived. You're a demon. Already inside, you belong to demons. You're mistaken. You don't have faith, but you think that you do. If you don't see the world as beautiful, you don't have faith. That's Titus chapter 1 verse 15. So this is where we have to to fix it today. So let's read Titus chapter 1 verse 15. So it's just before Hebrews and Philemon. To the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure, but both their mind and their conscience are defiled. Amen. So here it's saying, in the world, it's only God who says everything was good. How is it that people who were created to give praise, to give thanks, that's why we were made, God says all things were good. And he's saying you live by giving praise. But instead of giving praise, all we do is grumble and complain. It's because you have demons. So this is what God is saying. So why is it that all things I can't see with thanksgiving, I can't see all things as good? Because you can't see it as good, that's why you can't give praise. You don't have joy in your heart, so you don't have faith. Joy, thanksgiving. If you don't have this, then you don't have faith. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. So if you don't have faith, then you're someone who's going to go to hell. If you have demons, you cannot give praise. You can't see things in a good way. You can't see things as beautiful. So Titus chapter 1 verse 15. If you can't see everything as beautiful, it's because you don't have faith. Do you know what this faith is? What is this faith? What's it saying? And this is why you don't do well. It's your heart and conscience. Both of these have to be revived to be to have faith but these people who d- go to these fake churches and they don't even know about the heart and the three consciences inside let's read to the pure all things are pure but to those who are defiled and unbelieving nothing is pure but both their mind and their conscience are defiled amen so i'll read it again so if you become someone who's pure All things are good, they're pure. So if I'm clean, if my heart is clean, all things are clean. But if my heart's not clean and it's dirty, it's filthy, defiled, then you see everything in a dirty way. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, that's someone who doesn't have faith. They see the world in a filthy way. Oh, how can there be someone like that? Oh, how can that happen? It's because you don't have faith. So you see everything in a dirty way. Someone with faith, they see everything in a good way. They talk about positive thinking. But that's 
what you do with the head. No matter how much you do that, it's demons. It's outside of Christ, it's curses. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. But to not even know this and you attend church, so what you think with your head, no matter how much you do it, it is curses. All thoughts, all theories, what you do with your head, it is all curses. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. So if you say something is good or not according to your head, then already your 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 heart's a mess, your family's a mess, and yet you're deceived by yourself. And that's, that comes out in Titus chapter 3, verse 3. So today I have to live with with praise, with thanks. God says everything is good. So if we're living according to His will, then we have to be thankful in all things. Everything has to be good. But why doesn't this happen? Because I don't have faith. Because I still have something that's filthy. Oh, I don't, I don't like that. I hate that. That's filthy. That person, they can't give praise. Because already they're slaves to demons. They have so many excuses and grumblings. So God himself kills them if you grumble. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. So what kind of person have I become? Well, I have to become someone who has faith. Titus chapter 1, verse 15. To the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled, oh, I can't stand that. I that's bad. That's someone who doesn't have faith and unbelieving. So to these people, nothing is pure. Someone without faith, there's nothing in this world that is clean. So everything they see is grumblings and complainings. Everything they see, it's annoying, irritating. Everything they see, they don't have thanksgiving. These are the demons without faith. So what is this faith? But both their mind and their conscience are defiled. So these people without faith, it's because their heart and their conscience is dirty. So what is it they, that we have to fix? It's our heart and our conscience. So you say you attend church, but you don't even know how to fix your heart properly. And you, even more so, you don't know how to, to fix the conscience inside your heart. So all these fakes who say, oh, I believe. So denominations, 100% they go to hell, but they don't even know that. Because they're fake. They don't know what's true, what's fake. They just go anywhere. If I don't have faith, you see everything in a dirty way. So not having faith means that your heart and your conscience are defiled. And yet, people can't fix this. Today, let's fix it. Let's read again. Titus chapter 1, verse 15. To the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, Nothing is pure, but both their mind and their conscience are defiled. Amen. So if your heart and your conscience is is defiled, it points out here that you don't have faith. If you don't have faith, you can't give thanks in all things, but you grumble and you complain. So if you know this word properly, you can see, oh, that bastard, he's got demons. If you have demons, is that a man or a beast? So that's why you call them a bastard. If you call a beast, you know, if you say to a beast that it's it's a bastard, you don't call them sir. If you live like a man, then you got to see a dog as a dog and a man as a man. But because I'm fake, you treat a man you know, roughly, and then to a dog, you call them teacher. When God sees that, that's crazy. To look at a dog or a cow, to a beast, and treat them as a man, and to a man, you don't know how to treat them as a man. That's someone who is crazy. So what kind of person am I? Why is it to give praise to God, for your children to be obedient? Why can't I go that way? It's because I don't have faith. What is faith? It's your heart and your conscience. This is what God teaches us. Why is it that I, things don't do well for me, that I'm not being healed? Because you haven't revived your heart and your conscience. Because you don't revive your heart and your conscience, that's why the demons keep playing up. So how do you save your heart? Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15. Let's find that. So it's your heart and your conscience that is faith. 
People who say they attend church, they call themselves a pastor, an elder, or a deacon. That's not how you go to heaven. You need to have faith to go to heaven. What is faith? It's your heart and your conscience. That's what it clearly is recorded here. But you go around as a fake. God's will is to give thanks in all things. Why don't I have thanksgiving? And that's why you don't have praise. If your household doesn't have praise, then it's already a mess. How much don't you have thanks, thanksgiving that you don't have praise? God created us to give praise. He made us to give praise for Him. But people don't even know this. So it's like, Why? Why was I made? And they saw these wrong things. It's to give praise. When do you have praise? You have to have thanksgiving from the heart. That's Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. So that means you have to have a lot of the word of Christ. If you have a lot of the word of Christ, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, already that's faith. So you don't even know where faith comes from. You don't even know what faith is. Here it says you have to fix your heart and you have to revive the three consciences in your heart. That is faith. So these people who don't even know how to revive their three consciences, and when they die, they're like, they probably went to heaven. Let's see what happens when you die. You know, without the mystery of Christ, you can't get forgiveness of sin. So people are like, they probably went to heaven. Yeah, right. You didn't even go anywhere near the word. How can you go to heaven? Let's wake up. So we can live singing praise, no matter what anyone says. Let's revive my heart and my conscience, because that is faith. It's not what we've made. It's what God has appointed. So what is it to revive your conscience? Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15. Let's read it together. For thus says the high and exalted one, who lives forever, whose name is holy. I dwell on a high and holy place, and also with the contrite and lowly of spirit, in order to revive the spirit of the lowly, and to revive the heart of the contrite. Amen. Someone who, someone who cries and mourns and cries out, that's the heart that God revives. This is what God has recorded. So when when can our heart be revived? When our spirit is humble, when we don't have sin, because that's what humility is, to not have sin. So you have this demon of grumbling because you can't give thanksgiving. And so God himself will kill you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. So where does this grumbling, envyings, jealousies, pride, gossiping, Where does it all come from? The heart of hating to keep God in your heart. This is someone who God himself will kill. Why don't you have joy? You say, oh, my work, it makes me so tired. Just because your flesh is tired, does that mean, is that why you can't smile? That means the whole Bible is a lie. No matter how tired your flesh is, your heart and your flesh are different. If your heart is clean, if you have faith, if your heart has been revived, then you give praise. But you say, oh, it's because my flesh is tired that I can't give praise. No, that doesn't make sense. So what is faith? It's your heart and your conscience. How do you revive your heart? Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15. It's amen, isn't it? So 15 years ago, I preached about this in the sermon a lot. But these days you've forgotten about this and you don't do this. So when Pastor Park looks, it's strange. It's not working. There's no one who's smiling with joy in their hearts. They're all filled with worries. It's strange. If you're filled with worries, you can't see the world in a in a beautiful way. So if you can't see the world in a pure way, it's because your your heart is is dirty. You haven't revived your three consciences. So now you know how to revive your heart. To revive your three consciences, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, the good conscience, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3, your, your pure conscience, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 19, your, good, your kind conscience. So if you don't revive these three consciences, you'll go to hell. You have to revive these in order to have faith. So if you revive these, then everything is good. 
if, whether it's this, you have Thanksgiving, whether it's that, it's Thanksgiving. Even if someone torments you or curses you, it's Thanksgiving. Why? Because I can find something to repent of in that. So everything has to be seen as good. But even with your spouse relationship, you know, you get married and you're like, oh, my eyes must have been rotten for me to get married to him. So you make your eyes rot. Oh, I must have been crazy. How did I... Even though your parents, your cousins, your siblings, your friends tried to prevent you, 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 you said, oh, I'm going to live my life. And then you go on your honeymoon already, you're complaining. So what is this? So what you cannot stand, you know, in Korean, we say, you know, you can look at rice, cold rice, but you can't look at someone that you cannot stand. So this enemy, to be able to see them in such a beautiful way, it's don't look at them. If your heart and your conscience is revived, you see them in such a beautiful way. That is faith. That is faith. We need to have this faith. This is some end. So, to revive our heart and our conscience, that is faith. So, everything is good for us. God created all of creation and His Word, where He says everything is good. When that becomes mine, that's when praises pour out. You know, the choir, after they sing their praise, you know, do you, can you give praise at home or at work? No, it all disappears. That's because my heart and my conscience is still dirty. dirty. It's still not faith. So fake churches, they don't even know that faith is a gift of God. You re- they don't know that you receive faith from Christ. So if you want to talk to someone like that, it's so frustrating. Faith. You have to revive your heart and your conscience. If you revive your heart and your conscience, it will happen according to your faith. This person standing in front of you, what you know, the little that I do well, it's because I keep going the way to rev- of reviving my heart and my conscience. And so even though my children and my grandchildren are all there and my wife, she farts, you know, how refreshing is that for her? But the people around her, they're all like, even the grandchildren, you know, once they're, you know, grade two or three, they hear a sound and they're like this. But me? So this is how you can test to see if you have faith with your spouse relationship. So I quickly go to my wife's bottom and I do this. And so my grandchildren, they think, oh, my, oh, the grandfather is strange. So you're laughing because you haven't done it. But even if your husband farts, you need to suck it up. And if I fart, I have to suck it up. And if your wife farts, to suck it up. Because it's Thanksgiving in all things. And you know, when I do suck it up, it's just like some bean paste soup. Don't laugh. This is faith. Because it's good. You know, we all have this inside of us, these farts, because we're all just big maggots, so we'll fill with poo. You say yours is okay, but a spouse, you're one one body. So when your spouse farts, you know, the husband will say to the wife, oh, you know, how rude. And so then, you know, the wife has to hold them in. So whoever whoever farts, you have to have thanksgiving. That is faith. So when it says to test to see if you have faith, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, well, Jesus Christ has to be inside of you. Yes, that's your heart and your conscience. So today let's live by faith. Then everything is clean and good. If there's something not good in my heart, that's when you have these problems of disease. If you're grumbling and complaining, you have demons inside of you. You know, this is something I've actually done. You know, if you're you're having bean paste soup and then someone farts, when you don't have faith, you're like, oh, I can barely eat this soup because of the smell. But then you do something, you, you make gas that's even worse. But when I have faith, it's so good. 
when and you know my wife's face she looks even more beautiful when I see her then because you haven't done this you know you need to be able to say I'm meant to this but you're only smiling because it's you because you don't have faith so let's revive our heart and our conscience with faith let's see the whole world is beautiful if you see a problem as beautiful, that's when answers come out. So problems are blessings. With this, may we, our children, all of Korea, let's live with thanksgiving and praise. We believe this day will come. Let's call upon the Lord three times. What is faith? It's to revive our heart and our conscience. If we revive our heart and our conscience, what happens? You see everything as beautiful. You see everything in thanksgiving. If there's still someone you cannot stand or you're like, oh, I don't like this or I don't like that, you don't have faith. God created all of the world and when he said it was good, if we live according to his will, then it has to be good. So all things to give thanks, that is God's will. So may this be a precious time where we have faith and in our families, when you fart in a refreshing way, even though it's worse than being pay soup, may, when spouses, they suck it up for each other, that's when it's, it's good. You know, if you just say it with your words and then you do this, that's a lie. When I've tried it, it's not like that. It's so good. But my wife, sometimes she, she, sometimes she says she doesn't like mine. That means she doesn't have faith. So let's believe with thanksgiving so that praise is pouring out from my heart. Let's find our health and let's not let Satan take a foothold. And may all our desires be fulfilled. It will happen according to your faith. Let's all receive this blessing. Is this amen? Let's all pray. Father, heredity we have known that it's something that you cannot ever fix, but it happens by the blood of Christ. We thank you so much. Wherever we go, may we do forced air and may, may our bodies be healed to cast out our demons and the disasters and curses to depart. And may we receive blessings in our age where we do more and more well. And may our children receive these blessings. And may our children live being patriotic to our country and our people. And may we be renowned to be a family of, of obedient children. Almighty Father, by the blood of Christ, may we have a new start as a blessed man. May we end the filthy ancestors' heredity. May our constitution change. May our lives change. May we only possess the love where the Lord helps us. May we have blessed families. May our spouses be happy. May our children be obedient. May we be patriotic to our country and our people and for world peace. May we live as ambassadors of Christ in the stead of Christ. For those who want this their, on their spirits, their families, on their churches that they serve and on Korea, may you be with them now and forevermore. In the Lord's name I bless. Amen.